Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again, and today I wanted to show you how to install RetroPie Emulation Station on your Raspberry Pi 1, your Raspberry Pi 2, or your Raspberry Pi 0. Now I'm going to show you how to set up MAME. This is one of my most requested um, tutorials. I made a video a while back, but the sound was really low and a lot of people had a hard time hearing it. So hopefully this will fix it. So let's go ahead and get started here. You're going to need to download Win32 Disk Imager. Now this will allow you to flash the RetroPie image to your SD card so we can put it into the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. Um, you can go ahead and scan it if you'd like. This is totally safe software. As you see, there's 86,000 downloads this week. I've been using it for years. Great software. It's a must-have if you're doing anything with the Raspberry Pi. So another recommended software that I recommend you download is SD card formatter. Now this will allow you to restore your SD card to the stock settings. After you flash an image for the Raspberry Pi and you insert it back into your computer, let's say you wanted to flash something else on the same SD card, it only shows up as 54 megabytes. This will allow you to reformat the card so you'll have the correct size on, of the card left. Um, this is only you only need this if you ever want to reuse the card itself. If you go into the stock format Windows machine, it will not format it correctly. So SD card formatter is a pretty much must have. Also, if you're doing any kind of imaging on SD cards for the Raspberry Pi. All right. So let's get into downloading the RetroPie image. So you want to go to PetRockBlock.com. Now this is PetRockBlog. And you want to scroll right here. Go ahead and go down to Downloads. And now depending on the unit you have, you will download the corresponding image. So if you have a Raspberry Pi 1 or a Raspberry Pi 0, you're going to go ahead and download the SD card image for the Raspberry Pi 1 and the Pi 0. Now I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2, so I'm going to go ahead and get this image here. Now you can go ahead and get the Berry Boot version or the standard version. I'm using the standard version in this tutorial, so this is what we're going to go ahead and download. Alright, so it started downloading. I already have the image downloaded and placed on the desktop, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And I've placed it in a folder called Raspberry Pi on my desktop, as you can see here. As you can see here, we have the RetroPie version 3.4 for the Raspberry Pi 2 image. We want to go ahead and unzip that. So we'll extract it to its own folder inside of here. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this for you guys. So now that it's finished extracting or unzipping as you can see here inside of the folder we just extracted we have the disk image file now you want to take note on where your SD card is now mine is I renamed it SD card and it's drive E so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of here and open up win32 disk image now this is super simple here guys you want to make sure this is the drive that you're flashing to my SD card is drive E you can see I have nothing else to flash to except for the card. Now you want to click on this little blue folder here and find where you just extracted the RetroPie image to. As you can see, we have the RetroPie version 3.4 Pi 2. And I'm going to go ahead and click open. Now we're going to go and write. Yes, I'm sure I would like to write. And it's writing now, and I will fast forward this for you guys, and we'll get right into playing some games. So now that the write was successful, we're going to have to move on over to the Raspberry Pi. We're going to take the SD card from the PC, place it into the Raspberry Pi, and give it a first boot. Let's do that now.
Okay, so that's the first initial boot of the retro pie. I have a wired Xbox 360 controller that I have always used for my emulation station. So it's our the gamepad. We want to go ahead and set it up. So I'm going to go ahead and set these buttons up. We're going to hold A here. Detected my Xbox generic wired controller and just follow the on-screen prompts and you should have no problem setting up your controller. Now left thumb and right thumb are the L3 when you press in the thumbsticks. Okay, so the controller's set up and I am navigating everything with the controller right now. As you can see, we have no MAME option, no NES or SNES. Today I just wanted to show you guys MAME. Now we need to set up a few extra buttons within the MAME program, which would be the start button and the coin button for MAME, because you need to insert a coin into an arcade cabinet to get it going. So I'm going to show you how to load ROMs now. You're going to need a USB stick. And let's move back to the PC so I can show you how to do this. Okay, so we're back at the PC now. I've inserted the USB stick that I am going to use to put my ROMs on and install them to the RetroPie. So I have ROMs in this folder here, but we need to make a folder inside of the clean USB stick and name it RetroPie. Okay. So when you open this folder up, there's nothing here. I'm going to go ahead and take my Raspberry Pi is still running. I'm going to take my USB stick out of the computer and place it into the Raspberry Pi for a few seconds. Best thing is to have one with a light on it so you can see when it stops blinking, then you know the corresponding folders have written to the USB stick. So I've placed it in the Raspberry Pi. RetroPie is doing its folder allocation for me. Okay, so it has stopped blinking. I'm going to go ahead and take the USB stick from the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to place it back into my computer here. Okay, so the folder that we just created is now full of the emulators. Now these are emulator folders that you place a corresponding ROM inside. Since we are going to be using MAME and setting MAME up, I have always used MAME for all. Now I have my ROMs in this folder here, and I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. Now these are zipped MAME files. I'm going to go ahead and copy and then paste them into the MAME for all in, on my USB stick. So as you can see now, we have them here. So as soon as we place this back into the Raspberry Pi, they will start to copy to the SD card. So let's go ahead and go back to the Raspberry Pi now. Okay, back at the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to take the USB stick that we just created and place it back into the Raspberry Pi. It will take the ROMs that I just placed in the correct folder and they will be put onto the SD card of the RetroPie SD card that we just made. So if you're scrolling through here, you're, you won't see MAME right now until it's done copying and I reboot one time. So a quick way to reboot is press start on your controller, go to quit and restart emulation station. And after we restart this, we should have some ROMs installed and a MAME option on the front board.
There we have it. There's MAME. Okay, let's go ahead and start with Punisher here. Punisher. So I'm here in main and I'm pressing start and nothing's happening. That's because we need to map the correct button to main. Now you want to use a keyboard, plug it into the Raspberry Pi and press tab on the keyboard. Now this will bring up a, uh, this is a main menu, main main menu. So we'll go to input. We're going to scroll down here and you can use the controller to do this. The analog stick works to navigate. So we want to set a player one start button and I clicked a on my controller and I'm just going to press start. Now it knows that my joypad start button will start and we need to add a coin button. Now you can use the keyboard five, six, seven, and eight would be your coins, but I just want to use my controller. So I'm going to press A and then press the big Xbox button in the middle because I don't use that for anything else. So this will be my coin button. All right. So you can press escape on your keyboard and escape on your keyboard. So now when I press start, nothing happens. When I press my coin button, which I mapped to my Xbox logo button in the middle of an Xbox 360 controller we have a coin and you can just keep putting if you see the credits going up there I'm pressing the coin button and I'm gonna press start here so I'll be the Punisher Now this is a super fun game. You can also set up an extra controller just like we did with the first controller. As long as it's plugged into the Raspberry Pi, you should have no problem setting up a second controller so you can play two players. Now this is kind of trial and error with the ROMs that you're going to use. Um, most of the world ROMs that I have tried have worked. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here and we're going to start another game. Let's try Simpsons here. I'm going to go ahead and insert a coin by pressing my insert coin button that I just mapped. And that will be player one. So I'm Marge. If you'd like to use another character, you can set up. Over. So there's, um, that was pressing five on the keyboard, six on the keyboard, seven and eight. All right, guys, so that was setting up the MAME controller for your um, Raspberry Pi running RetroPie. Now, if you want to play Dreamcast in 64, I suggest getting a different unit, like an Android unit. This is a very low power chip. It plays PlayStation 1 
NES, SNES, MAME, Amiga, any of the older systems, Game Boy Advanced, Game Boy Color, it plays them fine. But when you try to get a little heavier duty emulator, it really, really lags and it's unplayable. So Dreamcast, as of right now, is unplayable. N64 is pretty much unplayable. I believe Mario 64 works decent. It's still got a lot of glitches, though. It's it's really not even worth playing it on here. But for older emulators, this is amazing. Like I said, SNES, NES, Amiga, Atari, MAME. This is great, and you can't beat the price. You have all these emulators built into one setup for a little $35 board. If you already have a controller and a USB stick and an SD card, you're set to go. So guys, I really appreciate you watching. If this helped you out, if you could help me out, and hit that like button and subscribe. And uh, keep tuned because I got a lot more coming. I'm going to show you some Game Boy running on this next video. Some NES, some SNES. I really wish that we could get N64 running full speed. But I do not think it's going to happen with the hardware that the Raspberry Pi 2 has. So, like I said, guys, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe.